All right, uh, we are going to do this. We're going to review factoring by grouping. Um, first, let's talk about something conceptual. So if somebody needs that, we, that that'll help. Um, previously, you would, um, let me just give an example here. Previously, you would, or ha, ha, it's taught in this order. So previously, you would have done something like this. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to distribute it so we know exactly what we're doing here. Minus 2x, minus 3x, and then plus 6. So note, we're going to review, we're going to see this again later where those, where this, these two pieces add together or sum to become the third, excuse me, the middle term. So that's negative 5x plus 6. Now, when you were given a trinomial, you were probably first taught to um, factor this by taking this 6, and this is just how I write it. I have lines and stuff. It looks like division. It's not division. It's, I'm just writing stuff down. It's kind of like scratch work. So I have this 6. Now I'm going to find all the factored pairs of 6. And it's positive 6. So I got 1 times 6, negative 1 times negative 6, because that would be 6. And then 2 times 3, and negative 2 times negative 3. And then I'm looking for, of those factored pairs, a factored pair that adds up to negative 5. Now, because the lead coefficient on this trinomial is 1, we can directly do this and get our factored trinomial. And of course, that's correct because that's what I started out with. We could also have done it this way, and it would be a direct reversal of what we did previously. If instead we think of, instead of thinking these of those two numbers, negative two and negative three, as being the values or the constants, the numbers in our two binomial factors. But instead we thought of them as uh, numbers by which we would split this middle term. We would get negative two x minus three x plus six, meaning I'm taking those two numbers and splitting this negative five x into the sum of negative two x and negative three x. Notice it is the direct backwards version of that. Then I could factor this and factor this separately by looking for their greatest common factors. Here in this first group or first pair, I would have x as my greatest common factor. And if I factored that from those two terms, I would get x minus two. If I do the same thing with the second pair, the negative three x plus six, and in this case, factored out a negative three, I would, after factoring negative three, I'd have x minus two. And then if I look at these two things as individual terms, because they are, I can factor them. I could factor, oops, I hate it when it does that. I can factor this and this away from those terms. So I'm gonna factor x minus two away from the other, from the two terms and I'll have left x minus three. And so I get the same thing. This is the method that we'll use for factoring by grouping. Okay, so I'm gonna erase all this so we can go back to the 10z squared. So 10z squared minus 11z minus six. I'm gonna take this negative six and I'm gonna take this 10, I'm gonna multiply them. Why do I need to do that? Okay, in the old version, if I had x minus b times x minus d, I would take the x times the x, get x squared, get the x times the d and get negative dx, negative bx, and positive bd. When I found the factors of this number, that would be b and d, I could have negative b and negative d, and b and times d. I don't know the other numbers, I just know B and D are factors of this number. Yes, B times D is gonna give us a number, we just don't know what B and D are. I know this looks really weird, but the bottom line is I would take this pair and then split the middle term just like that. But when I have a trinomial that doesn't have a lead coefficient of one, that 10 complicates things greatly because instead of having a one in front of here and a one in front there, I actually have this. 
And when I distribute this, I get a times c x squared minus a times d x minus b times c x and minus b times d, oops, plus b times d. The problem is if I just find the factored pairs of b and d, I will never get these a and c values into it. They, they're not in there. This number's not big enough to contain all of these, all four of those numbers. I only have those two. So that's why the method for factoring by grouping starts with taking the lead coefficient, in this case 10, and multiplying it times the constant negative six. And so I get negative 60. And now I use the exact same method. I'm gonna take negative 60. I'm gonna find factored pairs of negative 60. So negative one times 60, one times negative 60, negative two times 30, two times negative 30, negative three times 20, three times negative 20. Haven't found anything yet. Negative four times 15, that's not, that's not it, but it's close. If I go to the next one, four times negative 15, note the sum of four, negative 15, is negative 11z. Now, like I said, this informs us how to split this middle term up. We wanna split it up into plus four z minus 15 z, and then I just have the negative six minus, or equals zero. Now I'm gonna group these two, and I'm gonna find the greatest common factor. In this case, it's two z. When I factor that, I'm left with five z plus two. And when I group these two together, I'm gonna to factor out, because I want a five in the front, and it'll work out. If it's factorable by grouping, it will work. I'm gonna factor out a negative three, because I want to be positive five. And look, negative six is factorable by, or can be factored by negative three, and I'm left with a positive two. Notice that this is the same as this, and I wanted to do that in white, so it was more obvious. So now I'm gonna factor this away from the first term and the same thing away from the second term to get five z plus two. And then I'm left with two z minus three. And I can check, two, to, uh, two times five is 10 z squared. Negative three times five is negative 15 z. Two times two z is plus four z. And then two times negative three is negative six. And then of course these add up to be uh, negative 11 z and we get that okay now to get the answer I have to set these individual factors equal to 0 so 5z plus 2 equals 0 and separately 2z minus 3 equals 0 Add subtracting 2 and dividing by 5 I get z equals negative 2 fifths Adding three and dividing by two, I get z equals three halves. And that's what we get for our answer. Where do I stop this? How do I stop this? Do I do it over here? Oh yeah, I do it right here. 